and um, how it came to be and where it's come from. Um, we'd love you to tweet. Uh, please use our hashtag so we can follow and join in the conversation. Why the DX Lab? Well, for some background, the State Library of New South Wales is the oldest library in Australia. The library's collections document the heritage collections uh, of Australia and Oceania from discovery through to settlement, from the 15th to the 21st centuries. And the collection is valued at $3.15 billion. To give you some idea of context, that is the single most valuable asset that the state government owns. It's worth more than the art galleries collections, it's worth more than um, most of the other cultural institutions collections in New South Wales added together. So it's a significant asset for us. And over the past 10 years, the State Library of New South Wales has been created a substantial amount of digital content through a major digitisation program focusing on manuscripts, artworks, photographic collections, oral histories, maps and published works. In 2013, the library received substantial funding to ramp up the digitisation projects, which will result in around 20 million digitised images being made available progressively over the next decade, substantially increasing global access to the library's collections and providing important benefits to regional areas and creative industries in particular. Some of the highlights from the digitisation program for 2014-15 were 53,000 diary pages, um, 2,800 glass slide negatives from the Miles Dunphy collection, which are about the bushwalk, the establishment of the Bushwalkers Association in New South Wales. So beautiful images of um, national parks and wildlife in Australia. 13,073 plans digitised from the subdivision. We have 40,000 of these subdivision plans, um, which we're making available online. And um, they are the original plans for the establishment of some of the key suburbs in Sydney. Um, we've done in-house digitisation on Shakespeare's first folio, Guild's Birds, manuscripts from all of the um, significant colonial papers, um, glass paint negatives, and also some photographic collections of the Sydney rocks. We've outsourced digitisation of newspapers. We've added about six million pages to the Toronto newspaper collection, all of which are available through the API. We've added the Building Magazine, which is a significant um, architectural magazine from early in, the 19, uh, early in the 20th century, which has photographs of some of the most significant buildings in Sydney, the plans and the stories behind their building. The New South Wales Government Gazette, which sounds a little dry, but is actually a really rich collection of um, both personal and government information over the last um, 120 years of New South Wales. Oral history collections, we've got 11,000 hours of oral histories digitised and we are now looking at ways to deliver those. The David Scott Mitchell collection books, uh, we did a pilot project for 4,500 books which resulted in 1.3 million pages of content. The Tribune negatives, which is a really great collection from the um, early photographs from the Communist Party, where I think we can have a lot of fun with Spot the Politician in the 70s, and also Dixon pamphlets. Um, we, in 2013, we were, um, uh, sorry, 2014, we were restructured, not unlike a whole lot of other government departments, and all of the divisions and branches of the library were reviewed and realigned to better focus the library workforce with the new strategic priorities of the organisation. As a result of this restructure, the existing Digital Library Services Division, which covered the areas of ICT service delivery, digitisation services and library systems and websites, was recreated as a digital experience division. This new division has four branches, client services and support, a realignment of the traditional ICT service delivery to include library systems and websites, digitization and imaging services, which continues digitization as before, but with an expanded project management focus for the outsourced mass digitization programs, digital project management to better manage the increased number of technology related projects and a new branch of the digital, new branch of sorry, Digital Strategy and Innovation, which I manage. This branch includes the Strategy and Policy Team, Business Engagement, and the new DX Lab. The DX Lab is the first dedicated innovation lab in an Australian cultural heritage organisation. We are very proud to lead in this area, and we are excited by the possibilities that this lab offers the library and its clients. We take, take our inspiration from the British Library and the New York Public Library Labs, but we are determined to put our own stamp on what we do and to build our own relationships 
and partnerships with a wide variety of collaborators. The GLAM report of 2014 identified the need for organisations such as the Library to place innovation and digital services at the core of our business. The establishment of the Lab as a permanent part of the Digital Experience Division is a recognisation by the Library of the importance of um, digital services and innovation in memory institutions. An important part of the success in the planning and the implementation of the lab has been the fabulous support it's received from the top down. We've had constant and total support from both Alex Byrne, the State Librarian, and Rob Poir, the Director of DXD and CIO, and from all the members of the Executive, as well as an enthusiastic reception for the idea from the Library Council, the main governing board and site, and also the Foundation, who is also the main fundraising body for the library. So we've got some of the key stakeholders on site which has made the whole project a whole lot easier. This combined with a wide ranging program of staff engagement in the implementation process has meant we've been able to hit the ground running and in terms of their engagement it's not about them just talking about the fact that they support the library. Alex Byrne, the state librarian, joined the um, uh, workshops in their brainstorming about how the lab would work and the projects we're working on along with everybody else. He didn't want a special entry in that, he just joined the whole brainstorming process as well. The values and missions of the lab represent a new way of thinking for the library. We aim to be proactive rather than reactive and inclusive and collaborative. The DX lab is also the next logical step in the library's digital excellence program. Three, three years into the mass digitization project and on the eve of the deployment of a completely new collection management infrastructure and a totally rebuilt website, the time is right for us to be focusing on finding new ways to deliver and interpret this massive amount of digital content. We want to work with both educators and students, writers, researchers, creatives and other interested GLAM sector partners. We aim to develop ideas and experiment with new technologies and platforms and find new ways of unlocking the treasures and secrets held within the library's vast collections and revealing the gaps and strength in our collection as we are developing tools for internal as well as external users. Our brief is about relationships and developing staff skills as well as our peers and the public to connect and to create using the fabulous content that is available in the library's vast collections. We believe that our role is to work with others, to explore and stretch our boundaries in design and delivery of interpretations of the collections, to ensure that all our work is done in an open way, and as far as possible, our code will be made and from and in open source. And most importantly, it will be surprising. I'll now hand over to Paula, who will speak about the work we've been doing in the lab in the first six months. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, everyone, for coming along. Um, thanks for asking us to be here. Um, one of the things that Jess Scully said uh, at the Remix um, Summit in June was um, digitise then what? And I guess um, it really stuck with me in terms of this is what the lab is trying to do. We're trying to do the then what. And we, we might not actually know what the then what is, um, but we're approaching it in a kind of open way. So I thought I'd kick off with um, uh, the values that we sort of had started with at the lab, which is to be obviously a collaborative space to um, really push um, experimental projects, um, obviously creating them, engaging with people, with data and um, partners, and to be open, and Kate mentioned to have an element of surprise, and I think that we can be kind of really playful in this space and that our audiences can really um, kind of get into our collections through different and interesting ways and sometimes they're playful. So some of the design principles that we started working with initially um, when we started thinking about what this lab should be and what it should do was that we should do, do stuff because it mattered to our audiences and to the library, not just because it's shiny. Uh, that we will design creatively with data and with people and partners. That we wouldn't always overbake stuff, that we really wanted to push stuff out quickly um, and kind of leave a bit of room for error, failing and allowing other people to actually um, take our stuff and perhaps finish it and make it better. Obviously here to innovate and to push some of the boundaries in kind of um, UX and UI, which um, I don't think, you know, cultural heritage organisations have had 
the luxury of doing when they're doing their business as usual. Uh, obviously here to iterate, if something's built then we won't um, kind of try and build it, we'll just try and use it, improve upon it and then uh, likewise if we make something we want other people to be able to sort of iterate and improve on some of the stuff we do. And kind of like this lovely constant prototyping space that we're going to be in, um, which I think is um, a quite, quite uh, sort of, oh, I don't know what to say, um, <laughs> unusual for um, cultural heritage. This is us, that's where we live. Um, we're just using a, using a hashtag at the moment across all existing social media that the library already has. So this is our uh, website, um, and this is a place where you'll find uh, stories on everything we do. We'll try, we're trying to be really open about the process that we take, the findings, the learnings, the failings, um, and even just ideas, not necessarily things that we uh, will finish. Um, so keep an eye on that. Um, we're just about to publish some more stories before the end of the year. Uh, the DX Lab is actually quite a small team. Um, I have a developer, a UX developer, and it's me and Kate. But it's actually a library-wide team, and you know we couldn't do the stuff that we want to do without the whole library being engaged in this in the lab. So it's really the library's lab, um, and we also uh, have a, a volunteer already who is an um, ex Qantas senior executive and he's come along for the ride of trying to make some stuff innovative which is really fabulous. Um, so when we when we first kicked off the idea of this lab at the library it was really important for us to engage obviously with the staff um, to work out what it should what it should do. Um, so initially this is kind of a little bit about how we got to where we are um, and we're only sort of over six months old at this stage, so we're a toddler, really. Um, we ran three prototyping the lab sessions, which was really valuable to get feedback on what this lab should be. Uh, we run sneak peek uh, viewing sessions for staff, kind of in their lunchtime around our projects and how we can improve upon them. We've um, done some drop-ins on brainstormings for uh, projects with staff and this is um, voluntary and we've done over five of those sessions already with over 50 staff from across the organisation, really diverse um, areas as well, including the CEO. And um, all our projects are kind of developed in this way openly with staff in brainstorming sessions. Um, and we're sort of... <coughs> asking the staff to kind of you know look at values and how we can relate that back to our strategic plan which um, has the three pillars of collect connect and community and we're just kind of playing with tools um, to keep track of those values and the importance that the staff have engaged with with us and, and how they're going to change over time so we're just looking at mapping out those values and principles using free tools like graph commons and you can see you know how this relates back to our strategic plan, which is just a bit of fun, really. Um, <laughs> so, so what? What have we done? Um, we've had a busy year. It's been a fabulous and fun year, and we've met some great people. Um, the first thing we did was we decided that we should... Um, what's that? Oh, sorry, it's, it's Alvaro. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's Alvaro. Um, so we partnered with Code for Australia to do a, um, a little small event um, called Meet the Data Owners. And that was a way for us to engage with um, creators, coders, uh, 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 our curators were there telling stories about the collection. We had some collection items out. There was beer and pizza. And um, yeah, we just talked about what what the lab could be for them and how we could work together, which was a really fun night. But it made us realise that the face-to-face -face meetups like this are really important and important for our um, our growth and our partnerships. Um, it was great. Sold out really quickly, which was nice. <laughs> uh, and people just kind of came with an open attitude and also did some innovative stuff with our collections and shared that on the night, which was which was good. Um, we've been really interested in the services of the library as well as sort of, you know, the collections. 
um, and what people do in our library. And I think we're not sort of um, getting that kind of behind the scenes and the guts of the research that goes on within the library out in a digital way um, that, that people can kind of access, whether they're on site or online. So this is just a little um, experiment that we've done taking um, a, a Google Analytics search terms across all our um, catalogues online and on site. And we're just kind of turning this into a sort of, you know, anonymous but random um, search term um, piece of art, I guess. We haven't quite designed it yet, it's pretty raw. And we're just thinking of ways in which we can project this in unique places across um, our buildings in, inside of, you know, places that aren't, you know, traditionally gallery spaces, maybe under stairs. Um, so we're really interested in the visitor cycle um, of, of having our services and our collections available on site online and then back again online. Um, which brings me to our first data visualisation project that we launched with at the Remix Summit. Um, we wanted to have something go live uh, when we launched that demonstrated kind of the values and design principles that we were working towards. And we built this, uh, Grumpy Sailor built this um, amazing kind of database with us, which has been a really great um, process. Um, if you want to check it out, it's there. Um, and we'd love some feedback because it's pretty, it, it's kind of a, it, it is an experiment and it's, um, it's, it's raw in places and things are left out and they're left out on purpose, um, but it's kind of cool. Um, so we've done two phases which have gone live and we're work currently working on the third phase at the moment and this is just a little um, screen grab of what this um, interface does. So we wanted to uh, remove the search box from our collection um, online and and just to kind of bring a new way of looking at our content. This one, which we call the loose leaf phase, <laughs> is, um, as you can see, it's pretty much just a visual timeline using WebGL. Uh, you get to sort of um, look at the collection through a new way. Um, you can flip the library card, so nod to the traditional library um, card, and then um, you can keep kind of searching, well not searching, but um, accessing the collection through the tags and topics and relationships. So down the bottom there you've got related image content that you can just keep kind of sweeping through. Um, you can search by the, well you can Sorry, I keep saying search, it's terrible. Um, you can get get into the content via the topics. Um, and it's it's kind of a serendipitous way of getting into our collection, a very visual way, which you cannot get on the current way that it exists online at the moment. Um, you can favourite, collect your sets, favourite. Um, but that's kind of an interesting way for us to look at some data around just a small location in Sydney um, and how you can experience that in a different way. Um, so we thought that was kind of cool and then um, we decided that we would, the second phase would be totally different. Not a visual kind of uh, interface but rather a uh, heat map um, of the same data but accessed in a different way. So. Um, this is called Atlas. It's the icon at the top that's highlighted. Uh, and I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, so this is a kind of like a bird's eye view of that data. Again, using WebGL, and you come to Atlas via the first phase, which is loose leaf, but if you click on the icon, it will take you to this uh, heat map, which is again in WebGL. And this is actually looking at the data that relates to specific areas in the city. Again, it's a timeline. There's a slider at the bottom, which you can't actually see in this screen grab. And what this does is you can get a very different look at our collection and you can 
see the peaks and troughs of what's been digitised from certain locations in certain times. So all of a sudden we've got this different view of the collection that we potentially didn't see from a very flat, linear way. Again, you can get into the relationships with the collection through the tags and topics. Again, similar, flip the library card. At all times you can jump out of this and go to our ACMS to get the deeper level of the records, which is really important. So this, is, um, this has been really interesting. We didn't necessarily set out to have that kind of bird's eye view of the collection and the collecting history, but that's one of the things that we've learnt along the way, which can be quite useful. Um, and again, you know, we've been talking about how would we take that into a gestural on-site experience, um, which will be interesting if we can um, start working on that. So the third phase, uh, which is index, um, uh, there's a, a prototype that we, well, Grumpy have built, um, which is taking all the tags and topics and subject headings from all our collection um, that relate to those locations. And you can see how many tags and topics in a timeline there are that relate to those 3,000 images that are in the interface. Uh, we asked them to look at making this useful with another data set like um, ABS um, and that we've ended up uh, patching into Trove which is um, a fabulous content aggregator. Newspapers, pictures, manuscripts. So here you can see each of our tag, tags and topics uh, you can jump out and get the relevant information uh, according to the time. So you might want to delve deeper into the research. Uh, so we're going to publish this as a working prototype. It wasn't something that um, actually was part of the deal. It's just happened along the way and we think it's kind of cool and useful. But the question is how do we then take that and turn it into something meaningful in a design sense for the third phase? Um, so Grumpy Sailor are working on this with us right now, so hopefully we can look at some of those relationships and, and design something that's really useful but different to the other phases. So, that, I mean, it, I guess that's one of the things we've really learned from this process so far is the benefits of collaboration and working outside of yourself. Um, because we've learned so much about uh, doing that loom project with Grumpy Sailor, that it's really important for us. So we've got this idea of a digital drop-in culture within the lab, and we were fortunate um, to have Erica Taylor from Tweed Regional Museum receive a grant from Museums and Galleries New South Wales, and she chose to spend two weeks in the lab, the newly formed lab that really kind of <laughs> didn't have anything. <laughs> um, but we had, a, we had an idea of what we wanted to do and she came along for the ride with a very open mind. So we did a kind of two-week sprint. We only worked on this project um, with her and we wanted to produce something um, new and kind of exciting. So we came up with this idea of a city regional comparison using both our collections and what would that look like. And we kind of worked with our curators to figure out that we we were going to do something around the main streets of those two areas and just do a very simple comparison tool. Um, so we did some rough sketches and it <laughs> the importance of the rough sketch. I'm really into the rough sketch idea. Um, so this, this interface is pulling three APIs. Um, it's using Trove, it's using eHive and it's using state libraries, which is where um, uh, both our collections uh, sit and this is what we made and we made it really quickly and um, I think we're quite happy with what we learned and the results. Um, so at the top is the Tweed Regional Museum collection, at the bottom is the State Library collection and again it's a timeline you can actually look at um, relationships um, and what town main streets look like at that time. In the middle are uh, keywords pulling in from um, Trove that relate to uh, newspapers from both areas. And again you can jump out at any point and get to the deeper information from both collections. Um, so we think this is kind of cool and now we have been approached by a bunch of um, public library 
um, public libraries across New South Wales who um, potentially would like to add their content and we could build a bigger version of um, Main Streets New South Wales. Um, we're also in the process, process of reusing this for an on-site experience with totally different content, um, which will be really interesting to see how it adapts and how we need to change it for that purpose. Um, and one of just the cool things that happened out of this was that um, the mayor of the Tweed Shire Council was actually um, actually found one of the images in the, this interface that they then used whilst they were digging up the road in the Willembar because they actually had discovered there was a bridge underneath the road. So it was kind of nice that there was something <laughs> useful for um, an audience um, out of this playful interface. Again, with the digital drop-in and collaboration and fellowship, we felt that it was really important that we would support uh, di the digital humanities and coders and creators, and we felt that the lab is unique and, and lucky in that we can um, have this space that we should give back to, um, to others. So we've actually just closed this, but we launched a fellowship, which we hope to do each year. Um, so this is the first time we're doing it. It's a $30,000 fellowship uh, where someone um, gets to spend some time with us in the lab using our collections to build something really innovative. Um, so we'll be judging that in December and um, hopefully publish who that is, but we'll potentially be doing this next year as well. Um, experiment. So we've got a bunch of projects that we're kind of toying with, I guess, at the moment. One of them is a colour slider tool. We've got a bigger project on next year that deals with colour. And at the moment, we're um, trying to prototype up a sort of really playful interface using our collections. This is the Miles Dumpy collection that's been um, digitised, these fabulous glass lantern slides that are all hand coloured and have these beautiful round vignettes um, that we are extracting all the colours from and we're going to hopefully produce an interface that's um, either a dial or a slider that you return um, certain colours and relationships through those colours. Uh, we're quite fascinated with the services that are behind the scenes and under the library um, and bringing them to the fore of our audiences in meaningful ways. So we've got a, a bit of a prototype um, R&D project on at the moment with um, stack slips, uh, which, as you can see on the right there, are sticking outside of the reading rooms. And this is where people come in and request a book. A stack slip gets put. So it goes from digital to paper to person. And there's a lot of data that's coming out of that. I'm going to hurry. Um, and so we're looking at how we can use technology to bring together the life and the DNA of the library in meaningful ways through data visualisation, video, whatever it ends up being. Partnerships, obviously really important. We just recently partnered with Google to do internal street views. This is the Mitchell um, reading room. So anyone over the uh, world can now see inside the library. Um, you know, why would you do something when a partner like Google has the facilities to do this? If you go in there, you can see all the stack slips sticking out of the Mitchell reading room. You can't get up to this floor. Um, uh, this is for staff only. So it's a really great way of actually reading all the spines of the books in the reading room. Um, so that's a pretty fabulous partnership we did with them. And again, we did um, some gigapans with Google of our collection, which um, is kind of mind-blowing. It's not... It's just a kind of 5D camera that they've hacked up themselves. Um, and, you know, I guess the analogy here for me is we don't know what we're looking for, but technology can help us find um, either problems to solve or stories to share. Um, you know, this is incredible detail that's coming out of our collection that we would t not see with the eye. And who knows what... Um, you know, what other kind of pieces of technology we're going to have in two, three years' time that are going to bring our data and our digitisation information to this level of um, 
new ways of telling stories. I just find amazing. So this isn't live yet. We'll probably publish them soon. You can zoom out and see actually the size of that painting. So again, you know, um, partnering because people already have the tools, it's good, it's access, and um, it makes sense. So I guess partnerships and collaborations. Um, over to you. We're interested in what you guys do. We're interested in connecting with um, people who are passionate about working with data, passionate about working with collections, potentially doing a drop-in in the lab if we you know, can support that. Um, and so I guess that's over to you to have some chats with us. Um, so thank you for letting us talk. Um, so we, I have rushed her along so we could have time for questions, and we're doing well. So, does anyone have, excellent, <laughs> Sergey's always good for a start. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I just have one question, I guess it's many people kind of like puzzled at the moment, why? What is the problem you were trying to solve? Uh, cause there was no statement around what is the uh, existing user journey, how does it, what you do impacting, like what sort of, you know, data you're measuring, like. Like why are we doing what we do? Yeah, yeah like uh, fundamentally, because you've been talking about a lot of what, but what's the trigger? What's the impact? Well, I think, you know, the, 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 the the reason why you know we've got all this data that we've been fortunate enough to get um, from the government and we've got amazing content and collections, we need to experiment to um, use them and to invite others to use them as well to see what innovations and um, new findings we can get from these collections. We, we have um, over six million items in our collection um, and you know, how many? Yeah. Um, so bringing bringing those you know um, bringing those to people in new ways is really important. Uh, we are about access, um, but also it's really important for us to uh, allow others to use um, our stuff. And so the DX Lab has kind of been set up to uh, dip its toes in this kind of uh, way of working and to inspire people to um, do stuff as well. Does that answer your question? Well, you could talk more drink. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's great how um, essentially libraries and galleries have had to deal with um, what are we going to do with all of our stuff that we want to share with people who can't come uh, or who are distant. and so. One of the ways that they're doing that is digitizing it and finding new ways to sort of swim through all of that masses of data. And uh, another one of the examples was how they could take different pools of data and use those different pools of data to explore that information and bring in even more information from the outside world to add another layer of information on the data and imagery and stories that they have internally. That's it. Question. Hi. Uh, thank you. So you're talking a lot at the moment about um, digitizing, but is that today's technology? So do you actually have a strategy for re-digitizing at tomorrow's technology? So for instance, you show um, uh, Google and their incredible camera and they can capture great detail. All of the other stuff that you're doing at the moment is probably not. Uh, yeah, um, we've just finished a project uh, about 12 months ago on a collection known as the Holterman Collection. They're a set of glass plate negatives. They're on the UNESCO heritage list. And we first digitized those in, in the 1990s on video discs. Um, if you, anybody here is remembering those, they, and when we were looking at those, they were like looking at it through a milky glass. But we were very proud of the fact that the library had managed to digitize those collections. And just over two or three years ago, we re-digitized them using the highest possible resolution. And as you know, glass plate negatives don't have any, um, they don't have any grains, so you could just go on um, expanding them and they don't pixelate so well. So the collection now has been digitized with these 
ultra high resolution and historians are now finding detail in this collection that they've never been able to see before. Before you could see that there was a shop, now we can tell you what's in the window and how much the prices are. And this collection is of um, gold rush towns in the 1860s, so it's a pretty amazing collection where Holtman set out to take a photo of every building in the colony, which sounds very familiar to what Google is trying to do. It was already done in Australia in 1860. So, um, yeah, we do it again. And the other thing we're spending um, quite a number of millions of dollars on at the moment is digital preservation, because we understand about the fragility of digital files and digitizing once and just throwing it in a, on a server and hoping that it, it will be okay is not good enough. So we have a complete program of uh, digital preservation that's going on at the moment. So we'll look after the collection because the other biggest challenge to us is not only the stuff that we're turning digital, but the born digital collections that are coming into the library now from contemporary people, contemporary ph photographers, digital publications, etc. So we are moving very firmly into that space and funding and resourcing it. Excellent. So, like all of your tweets from today, will eventually end up in the New South Wales State Library <laughs> um, in a new digital form. We do collect tweets. Yeah. Uh, I have a couple of questions. First question: We've seen uh, amazing ways of working with visual information. Um, do you have any plans to do like with audio information, text information? Anything like that? Uh, funny you should mention it. I'm heading up a working group at the moment to look at ways of delivering the 11,000 hours of oral history. Um, if you have any ideas in that space, I'm really open to them. At the moment, we're looking at um, not only ways of delivering them, but also ways of getting people to help us transcribe and index those collections so that we can make them far more discoverable. Uh, text is a whole other space for us, and we're working with some people from Monash University at the moment doing some. Um, analysis of some of the text out of the David Scott Mitchell collection. Um, these are big new spaces for us to be in. Yeah, thank you. And another question, why um, no search? I think we wanted to um, just take away that kind of white box search and um, see what it would look like without. Um, and is it useful? Is it um, something that's meaningful? Um, so yeah, it was really a deliberate attempt at trying something new. And what's the results? What's the outcome? Well, I guess it's people are getting into the collections and the, and the relationships in different ways. Um, you, you can still go back into the deep record, as I said before, but I think um, it, it, having that kind of step back bird's eye view, you don't get when you get your search returns you know, after each other. And one of the problems we find at the library about search is that you sort of have to know what you're going to find before you can find it. This was about a serendipitous approach to looking at collections. So it's obviously not the only way into the collection and we'll still have all of the search engines you would expect us to have, but this is about people who want to come and say, I don't know much about Sydney in 1800, what did it look like? And just go in it that way. Hi. Uh yeah, okay, so it's kind of just touched on what I was going to um, ask you, uh, that it kind of like the tunnel with the images um, look like uh, something you just go for a wander. And if you see something that interests you, rather than specifically looking for something, but that's like, what I was going to ask you is how the your fella with the bridge under the road, how he found that, was, was that just a yeah, serendipitous wander or? I think what happened was we were, we had to go through a process of tagging all of the Tweed Re Regional Museum um, images in eHive, and I think it came through from the work that we did through tagging um, that collection. So whether he found it in Main Street or not, it was it happened at the same time that that interface went live, and we did a whole bunch of extra data on that um, image um, collection. I'm sorry, but we're running out of time for questions. But Okay. Just before we move on to our next talk, what I wanted to let everybody know is that I'm working with Paula to put together a workshop in the new year. There'll probably be about 25 spaces for people to come and play. So once we've worked out the details of that, we'll put it up there and first in gets to play with the data. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you.
Brooke, Paula, and Kate can hang around and come to the pub and ask their answer questions. So not everybody all at once, but I'm sure if you form an orderly queue and have have bring a glass of wine, you can ask them a question. Um,